Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be doing another book review. This time I will be reviewing the book Lies She Told by Kate Hollihan. And it's actually a book of the month pick from Emily back in September. So yeah, let's get into it. So as always, I will be starting with the non-spoiler section. So the story essentially follows two main characters, Lisa Cole, who is a writer, and Beth, who is a new mother, as well as Lisa's character in her new book. To make things a little bit less complicated, let's start off talking with Lisa and her world situation. So Lisa is with her husband, David, who is a lawyer, and Lisa it's been a little lonely the past few months because David, her husband, who is a lawyer, has been too busy trying to find his missing best friend. So because of this situation, he is he has pretty much left her alone to her own devices for the past few months. And on top of this, Lisa has been trying to have a child and start a family for the longest time. She has gone through multiple different types of fertility hormones, different methods to have a kid, etc. Et she has basically exhausted all her resources to have a child. And because David is pretty much non-existent the past few months, especially with the whole Nick situation, they haven't really gotten together to really, you know, have a kid. So her two main problems right now is one, trying to be a writer and coming up with the next uh, bestseller, as well as trying to have a kid to start a family. Now moving on to Beth's story, her story is definitely a bit little more complicated. Also mind you, she is basically a fictional character inside a fictional book. So that's like inception, you know? <laughs> but anyways, in Beth's world, she just found out her, that her, uh, her husband Jake, who is also a lawyer, is now cheating on her. And she is also a new mother, so she is basically completely freaking out because she has this baby, little baby girl. And she doesn't know what to do and she does not want to be a single mother in this situation. So like most people I think who finds out that their significant other is cheating on them, goes on an intense hunt to find out who they are, what they're doing, how do they know this person, etc, etc. So Beth did the same thing. She went to find out who this woman is, found out her occupation, found out how she is somehow related uh, and what her situation is to Jake, her husband. And after one night, upon seeing her husband and this woman together, she goes on this intense rampage. She accidentally kills the woman and basically just tosses her body into the East River. So right now her two problems are is one, she just she basically just murdered her husband's mistress and she doesn't know what to do next. She's not sure how to proceed. And two, she has a new baby. She doesn't know what to proceed with that either because her husband Jake is cheating on her. So basically these stories you can already tell that Beth's situation is a little bit similar to Lisa's situation. But then that's when things start getting really crazy. So shortly after Lisa finds out she gets a call that Nick's body is found in the East River and her husband is actually the primary suspect. So then she herself is also being questioned as to what is the true relationship between David and Nick. What is going on between the two of them? Was there any motive? Why, you know, why would they think that David murdered Nick, etc, etc. And she also realizes that the way that Nick's body um, was found was eerily similar to the way how Beth just murdered that fictional woman. So Lisa now has to face the question with, is her husband really a murderer? Who is actually the true killer? And three, why is this her fictional book so similar to her reality? So that's essentially what this book is about in a nutshell. And if this seems interesting to you, then definitely go check it out. And then I will see you back for the spoiler section. Okay, so to start off with, I actually thought this book was incredibly, incredibly slow in the beginning. Not to mention it was also really confusing. Because of the fact that Lisa's world and Beth's world are so similar, it was actually really confusing in terms of characters, figure out who, you know, everyone was. For example, in Lisa's world, she has a man in her life called Trevor, who is actually her editor. There's, it's a platonic relationship, completely platonic, but he's described as ridiculously good looking, relatively tall, and African American. And then Beth's on Beth's world, she has also has a man in her life called Tyler, who is her therapist, and he is also described as ridiculously good looking, tall, and African American. So with Tyler and Trevor going on, I it was just honestly the names were way too confusing. Like, 
Who names them both Tyler and Trevor? Like, do you see the correlation here? It's way too complicated. Not to mention, like, everyone else. Like, they both want to have kids. Well, Beth technically has a kid already, but still, they both are trying to, like, you know, start a family. One is just happens to be a step ahead than the other one. And both of their husbands are lawyers, etc., etc. Just there are just way too many similarities between the two worlds that honestly it was really hard for me to get into the beginning because they're just so slow and it was just so confusing and I didn't really get I didn't really get into it until maybe about the second quarter until maybe about the second half and that's when things started to get a little bit more interesting it also didn't help the fact that the POV alternated between Beth and Lisa which I mean in retrospect is not a bad idea but because the beginning was just really similar to each other, at least in my opinion. It didn't really help because it just made things even more confusing, especially when characters are being introduced and then you're thinking, wait, didn't this person just get introduced to, you know, Lisa's world or Beth's world or vice versa? And then you're kind of thinking, or at least I was kind of thinking, wait, let me go back and re-double check because... <laughs> Why did they sound so similar? It's like deja vu all over again. And I couldn't even decide which character I like more. Mainly because both of them, I mean neither of them, seemed particularly appealing. And they were both a bit clueless at times. But Beth did become a bit ruthless towards the end. Which maybe it made me feel like, okay, at least she seems to know what she's kind of doing in this state. Because Lisa was constantly in freak out mode. She was always in this panic mode in terms of you know when she found out that her husband was gay oh my god or when Nick's body was found and she's thinking why is it so similar to her book and she's always it seems like she was always a few steps behind you know she was always trying to figure out what is going on and she was always very confused whereas in Beth's case she did freak out but she was way more level-headed she was pretty good in figuring out her alibi in terms of where she was that night and how to get the other person who was actually with her that night or earlier that night to be on the same page with her so i would say that i like beth a little bit more than lisa just because i feel like at least she was able to think things out in a more logical manner as opposed to Lisa who is just freaking out over there. I don't know about her. <laughs> so as for the climax, I like I said before, I don't think the climax really started until, you know, about the second half of the book when things actually started to get a little bit more interesting. Uh, things are revealed and you're trying and you're finally realizing, you know, the dominoes are starting to fall into place here. One thing I didn't consider even at all was the fertility hormones. I definitely didn't think memory loss, especially sub sub such substantial memory loss, was a sort of um, symptom or after effect. So with this whole memory loss ordeal or situation going on, Lisa, I felt like Lisa just didn't, she got even more confused. She wasn't sure who was a killer anymore. She kept thinking it was maybe David, but then she was thinking maybe it was herself because, you know, she was, she was forgetting this whole situation. And then not only that, but then she realized that when she did some more research, she found that Chris actually, her best friend, was actually the person who last saw Nick and then she thought maybe it was her. So honestly for Lisa's part she was all over the place and then as things started to progress a little bit more her whole history of suppression was revealed and honestly I felt like that was kind of a cop out in terms of a conclusion and the whole situation with her, her father too like that definitely threw me off kilter because it just seemed like this book was more about like intrigue and stuff and then all of a sudden this like shocking tidbit about what her father did to her it just didn't really seem to fit with the rest of the book. So overall, I definitely thought it would... I really hope that things would have been different for both characters. Beth's ending, even though I wasn't particularly satisfied with it, at least it was an acceptable ending because she kind of got like her second chance. For Lisa, her ending was just so depressing. I mean, her husband's now gone because she killed him. Um, her husband's lover Nick is gone because she also killed him and she has no kid because of the whole situation with her father and the molestation and the scarring down there so her ending which is super depressing I was really hoping for a happier ending I don't know how I feel about this book at the end of the day I think it could have been so much more interesting in terms of what the actual explanation was than what it actually was and the ending was just really depressing, I think, especially for Lisa. So, I don't know. This 
I apologize if this review seems a bit on the confusing side because I myself was confused and I still can't decide if I really like this book or not. But yeah, that's it for my review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it even though it was a little bit confusing and convoluted I think. Uh, but if you enjoyed it still, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. And I also have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, so do follow me on there. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!